This video is brought to you by YT Andrew Paul Tech Repairs. If you have a console, laptop, computer or Macbook in need of repair in the UK or the EU then have a look in the description below this video for details on how to contact us in order to organise your repair. Right, hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to today's video and today we're going to be taking a look at this PS4. Uh, this PS4 has been sent in and apparently it's had white light of death for over a year. So, uh, <coughs> we'll wait and see exactly what was causing that then. So I'm not sure if this has been somewhere else, uh, or whether this is the first time we've seen it, but apparently this has been locked away for 12 months. Uh, I've literally just got it out of the box, I haven't looked at it at all, so let's see what we need to do. So, this is the machine in question. You're seeing it for the first time, as am I. So, as always, with the white light of death, um, which is a bit of a a strange term in itself because of course there's nothing actually physically wrong with the console it's it's something to do with the HDMI circuit the machine itself is alive and well and kicking and doing exactly what it should do it's just that we can't see on screen exactly what it's doing so it's a bit of a, a bit of a strange term but never mind uh, but anyway so let's take a look and see if we can see what's going on okay so the first thing to make sure in all cases where, where you've got a machine which is being reported to have a so-called white light of death is to check the condition of the HDMI port and that's what we're going to do first so let's see if we can get this on camera I'm starting to use this uh, fancy video camera of mine a little more these days Oops. alright so let's see if we can have a have a look there so now is there anything untoward there? it doesn't look particularly great does it? That doesn't look particularly fantastic, and let's just have a look by eye, and sure enough, uh, it looks like, yeah, I don't, I'm not sure, sure I'm going to be able to get this on camera for you, but I'm going to try. So, if you look towards, yeah, you can just about see, so if you look on the right hand side, one, two, three, four, five, six pins on the right hand side, see how they look higher than the four on the left there on the top row? Well, those uh, end six pins there are pushed back in actual fact so they're pushed further back into the port than what they are on the left the comb itself is also broken so this definitely needs a HDMI port and whether it's going to need anything else in the meantime I'm not entirely sure as yet so it's definitely going to need a port putting on it so in all cases where you get these so-called white light of death the first thing you need to check is the port and the condition of it Chances are, if the port looks okay, it is. You know, that that's generally one way to look at it. It is possible that they are internally broken, I've, but in all the time that I've been looking at these things, I've only ever seen two where that has been applicable. So, it's not un it's not likely. Of course, you know, always verify that with a multimeter in continuity mode and check each pin to each connection on the motherboard to make sure that the pins are actually making connection with where they need to do. But generally speaking, if the port looks good, it generally is, and your fault is elsewhere. 95% of the time, that further fault will be with the HDMI encoder. We do have videos on the channel of how to replace HDMI encoder IC on the older SAA SAB video um, consoles, which I'm not sure if that's an older video that we did ages ago, um, which we didn't do under the camera. If we do ever have to do another one on the SAA SAB boards, I will do it underneath the microscope for you, because I think that's an older video. We could definitely do with redoing that one. Um, but for today, at least, this is certainly going to need at least a HD, at least a HDMI port, if I can get my words out. So let's get this apart, let's get it on the bench, and let's get it worked on. Right, OK, ladies and gentlemen, so we've got the board out of that PS4 now. And as you can see, it's, uh, yeah, it's not looking great, is it? So this port has definitely had a bit of a whack. So you can see here, of course, this is how you would expect it to look underneath the microscope if the port was good. So, you know... You can see there, look, the pins are nice and flat and there's nothing sticking out the back. But then you see these, and those pins there tell you that something is definitely, definitely wrong. So those are all stuck out the back. These are all supposed to be shoved through here. The fact they're not and they're out the back means that they're not making connection to the HDMI lead. And that means you're going to get no picture on our PlayStation. And we can see here... There's a real buckle on this port here, so you can see where it kind of kinks in there. That's a classic telltale sign that this has had a bit of a shunt while it's being plugged in. And whether it's been dry, and you can just about see as well, it's facing upwards because you can just about see the bottom lip of the HDMI port here and the top here. So normally you wouldn't expect to be able to see that, but because it's angled upwards, 
you can. So this has definitely had a port. So th this is this is a classic case. This is a classic sign of a HDMI port that's been either dropped whilst it's been plugged in, or it's been sort of pushed against the back of a cabinet whilst it's been plugged in, or something along those lines, or somebody sort of kicked the lead. You know, it's been trailing across the floor or something like that. And yeah, it's just all kinds of nasties can occur from things like that. And it would appear that's what's happened here. So. Why is this a problem then? Well, obviously we can just replace the port and everything's fine usually. Um, but sometimes, of course, you can do that and and you'll find that you still won't have a picture on your on your PlayStation. So, you know, what happens is is that sometimes these pins, when they get pushed out, they make contact. And the thing with uh, this is is that some of these pins certainly over to the right hand side are signal lines okay so the the p corresponding pins here are soldered and they travel down these vias uh, which are here, the little circles, they go through the board to the opposite side. They go down these little traces here, the little lines you can see, down through these vias to the other side of the board. And at the other side of the board is something called a HDMI encoder IC, which is a little chip which actually does all the fancy things as far as getting the video from your PlayStation out to your TV. So, of course, the APU does all the nice processing and the graphics, it, you know, it does a few other bits and pieces. It throws it out to the HDMI encoder I see that packages all the video up and you know makes it all nice puts all the frames together throws it out to your TV at whatever sort of frame rate you specify 50 hertz 60 hertz at 1080p 720p 480p 576p and all that sort of good wonderful stuff it mixes the audio and the video signals to make sure that they're together and they're timed properly and then of course it all gets displayed in your lovely uh, full HD or 4k TV these days what can happen is, is that if some of these pins touch, because some of these pins are ground, um, what happens is the signal paths get put to ground. Sometimes you get away with that, but sometimes you don't. And what will happen is, is that the chip itself, the HDMI encoder IC, becomes grounded. That can blow and it can damage the IC to the point where you know you will get no picture even if your port is good so you can replace this and occasionally after a new port's been applied there uh, those encoder ICs are still bad or the encoder IC has been you know has been has been damaged it's gone bad uh, then obviously you know you've still got a problem and I'm just trying to see if I can find one here just in case you haven't seen one before but they look like this the little Panasonic uh, on this particular board revision uh, this is an SAA001 board. Uh, these are MN86471A. On the newer uh, Slim PS4 and on the 1200 series. So the 1200 series onwards, those are the ones with a little matte hard disk drive cover. They have a slightly different chip. They're, a, they're still a Panasonic uh, MN series chip, but they're an 864729. Uh, so they're a slightly newer version of chip. They're a different style of chip as well. If you need a video to see how we replace one of those and what one of those looks like, I'll happily drop you a link to the relevant video in the description below. It should be there. Hopefully I've remembered to put it there. If not, feel free to drop me a message or a comment say, oh, you didn't put the link in for the video, and I will happily go and update it. Um, but no, hopefully I've remembered. I've been getting pretty good at remembering linking videos and things these days, so... There's hope for us all if my memories allow me to do things like that these days. So anyway, let's have a look then and get this port off. So what do we do? So those of you who've seen these videos before probably know. Those of you who haven't, stay tuned. So looking over the, the videos on the channel the other day and of course we started out a couple of years ago some really humble beginnings basically off the back of a Panasonic TZ7 uh, Lumix camera which had a video feature but it wasn't brilliant um, you know and obviously we didn't have any microscope set up we didn't have anything to show actual proper rework as such so it was all done down the viewfinder with that camera and of course you know it's, it was it was a decent video camera at the time it was a decent digital camera but you know there's no substitute for for decent video is there certainly when you're trying to see how things are done and, just going back over some of the older videos, <coughs> I'm just thinking, you know, some of these probably if we get if we get round to it, we get the time, probably should re-record them so you can actually see some of what's going on. So that's probably what I'm going to try and do at some point as we come across issues, you know. Um, 
864729 on the older 12100 card with IC replacement. We do definitely have a video for that, uh, and it was done underneath the microscope. These uh, 864718s, I'm not entirely sure if that was an older video. I think it was an older video where we do some diagnosis on determining whether your encoder IC is good or bad. I'm sure that's an older video. I will get around to re recording that one for you at some point. <coughs> I also want to do some pinout videos for the um, PS4 Slim, PS4 Pro, and maybe some Xbox One uh, pinouts as well for those of you who would find those useful. Because let's face it, you know, it's always useful to have a little diagram to reference if some of these HDMI pins get pulled. Obviously, that's what we're here to try and avoid. So. We're going to show you how you can do it without pulling any pads. So you'll notice that this stuff that I'm putting on here, this paste, this is called flux paste. This is called flux paste, and basically what this does is this aids the tinning and wetting process uh, from the the solder, and basically this enables us to make some nice clean joints. So what we're going to do is the stuff that Sony uses from the factory is something called leaded solder. Okay, it's not particularly great stuff, it's rather nasty and it's quite difficult to get a decent join out of. Uh, what it does mean as well is that the, high, the, temp, the melting point is a lot higher than leaded, so it can actually make getting these things out a little harder. So what we do is, nice big chisel tip on the end of the soldering iron, and we put some leaded solder into the joints and we just work it back and forward and what that does is that makes sure this leaded solder which has a much lower melting point goes down into the holes and mixes with the leaded and actually makes it easier to get it out so leaded solder does flow a hell of a lot easier than lead free it's a lot nicer to work with it's a lot nicer I suggest you if you are replacing this sort of you know these things to use lead solder, leaded solder, 6040 tin lead solder, you can get it from anywhere, it's nice and cheap and that is definitely what I'd recommend you use if you're going to be doing this kind of work. Don't torture yourself with trying to use lead free solder. A lot of solder you can buy these days is lead free, a lot of the stuff you get provided with sort of like cheap soldering irons and things is lead free and it's bloody horrible and it's almost impossible to work with. So don't torture yourselves, really it's not it ain't worth the hassle. So you want some nice, decent lead, leaded solder. I keep wanting to say lead free for some bizarre reason. Right, here we go. So we're now going to get the uh, hot air station into play. This is a quick 861DW hot air station. It is around the £250 mark. For UK, uh, for UK buyers. It's an excellent station and I wouldn't be without it. We're using the uh, a kinked, kinked nozzle today, which the kinked nozzles make working underneath microscope a lot, lot easier. So what we're going to do is we're just going to pass backwards and forwards over the solder joints here and we're going to watch for those to go nice and shiny it's really really cold in this office today it's deathly cold, in fact I can see my breath so we can see as we pass backwards and forwards how shiny those things are going so we're just going to keep passing backwards and forwards and you noticed at the start we also put some flux on the 19 pins and pads on the top side of the board that will just help those flow as well once they get up to temperature so the key is if you don't want to rip any pads because that's just a nightmare. The key is not to get impatient. Don't be tempted to push these things or pull the port. I've seen some videos on YouTube which are alleged to show you how to do this process. And I think the guy gets hold of it with a pair of mole grips and just more or less rips it out with a board. I was trying to use a paint stripper and it makes me cringe every time. Every time I see it. Because doing it that way is just asking 
to pull these things out of the board. So you can kind of see actually that some of the solders disappeared down through the holes. Which is good. So get ready because we're going to see the uh, these legs disappear in a second. You can see how wobbly they're getting. So once the heat permeates through the board and the pins on the on the back side become molten, this pot's just going to fall out. So I'm not pulling on it, I'm not tugging it. All I'm doing is I'm just tapping on the top side. There we go. With the mole grips. So if you want to, you know, don't don't tap it downwards away from the board. If you want to see how it's doing, tap it up back into the board. So, you know, tap it upwards. So you can see there our pins were moving. That way you're not going to damage it, but you can still see kind of how molten or otherwise your bits and pieces are. Don't ever be tempted to tap away from the port. Don't ever be tempted to tap down away from the board. So as we uh, were looking at it there, if you tap that way, you're putting all the strain through the 19 pins. If you tap it upwards, so you tap it this way towards the camera, that's not going to put half as much strain on those pads. And what you'll see when we turn this over... <coughs> I need to tidy this desk. What you'll see when we turn this over... In a second, and I get some focus, and I get you in position... What you'll see is... get you some focus. There we go. We can see that all of those little pins are nicely in position. So we're just going to run some more. So you can see this shiny sort of watery stuff there. That's the flux of course. So we're going to use that to our advantage. Same chisel tip with some leaded solder. We're just going to run over those pads. We're going to make sure there's a nice coating of leaded solder on each of those pads and we're going to fill those holes to the side. So those holes to the side are what the legs of the HDMI port are going to stick through so we just need to fill those back up because of course all that's come out with the legs of the previous port Okay, so that's most of our hard work done there. The hard part's getting it out without damaging it, you know. Or certainly the hard part if you're new to this kind of work. If you're new to this kind of work, then obviously that's the hard part is getting the port out. But plenty of flux, decent quality flux. We're using some Amtec RMA 223 TPF UV today. Uh, I do have some Amtec uh, 559 over there for when this stuff runs out. I'm nearly at the end of the tub for this stuff, so that's excellent stuff if you haven't used that. It's a little bit more expensive, but my word, it's worth it. So we're going to get some HDMI ports. Well, just the one. But now then. On to my sort of half exciting news. My web shop is nearly up and running. So the URL, the URL, the URL is in the description. There's nothing on there at the moment. Uh, it is just a, a blank placeholder page for now. I'm hoping within the next two to three weeks that website is going to be up and running. And I am going to be providing all sorts of things through there. So HDMI ports, yep, yeah, I'm going to sell those. Um, including for the Slims and the Pros, because those are really hard to come by at the moment. Xbox One HDMI ports, yep. Yeah. Uh, little components, so the EMI filters, uh, we're going to stock those. Uh, the little diodes and things at the back of the port, you can just see there where the leg of my HDMI port is, that people commonly blow off. When installing the new ports, we're going to stock those. The little resistors behind, again, which people tend to lose, we're going to stock those. 
all the bits and pieces you need to do this sort of work. I'm going to stock on my web shop. So the URL is there, like I said. Hopefully in the next two to three weeks that's how it's going to go live. I'm more than happy to ship worldwide. When the site's up and live, if you don't see your country, just give us an email. Email address is in the description as well, ladies and gentlemen. And we'll happily hook you up. So you'll notice that the solder in those locating holes has gone flat. To the holes, it's all looking nice and shiny, so we're going to offer our new port up. Okay. Up and through the holes of the jubbly. So we're just going to check the alignment to make sure that's sat nice and flat. It is indeed. So if we take a look at the rear, these are V2 ports as well, so called V2 ports. These debuted on the SAC revision motherboards and the, the difference is is that if you look at the port that we took off look how nice and aligned that is so if you have a look at the port we took off if I can find it there you go it isn't this particular one but this 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 will demonstrate the point see how the pins all stick out of the back yeah they can all push out of the back like that the V2 ports that we use and that I'm going to stock on my web shop are these new revision from the SAC board. So you can see how they're a completely solid back. You don't get that same problem. The pins don't push out of the back. Also, these are rather nice quality ports as well because uh, the actual centre pins... So you see how at the start of the video when we showed you uh, what was wrong with the original port on this machine, we actually showed you... Um, how the pins could push back out of that comb in the middle so obviously there's a big slit in in the front of your HDMI lead and obviously that slit sits over the little row of pins basically what happens is is that on the original ports and some of the cheaper uh, aftermarket HDMI ports those pins can still slide out of the back of the comb they can't on this they're all sort of embedded in into the middle of the plastic of the comb so they don't slide in and rely on friction to keep them in place, they're actually bonded into the plastic so they're a lot harder, they're a, they take a lot more abuse that doesn't mean to say you can just go smacking your PlayStation around but it does mean that when you accidentally catch it you know, or somebody goes dusting the back of the AV cabinet and pushes the thing into the back of the cabinet you're less likely to find it's damaged they are just a, a lot better port to install. They're also nicer as well because some of those really cheap aftermarket ports are horrible to get aligned. You have to bend the legs and things like that and you just don't want to be messing about with that. So yeah, those are a really good quality port. We're going to do them a really good price for you as well. If you need them in the meantime before the web shop is up and running then as I say my email is down below in the description drop us a message on there with how many you want, how many you need and we'll hook you up likewise the uh, when we do the repair videos you know where people have ripped pads off or you know these traces are missing and things like that um, we do we use something called magnet wire or enameled wire we also stock that in individual reels of 15 meters. Again, nice cheap price for you. So yeah, if you need anything before that web shop is up and running, ladies and gentlemen, then just drop me an email. The quantities and your address or location, and we can get a quote to you, including shipping. If you're happy, PayPal, bank transfer, all happily readily accepted and we can get that stuff sent out and shipped off to you like I say I know some of this stuff is really difficult to find motherboard components 
like I said, those little diodes and things to the rear of the port that often get lost, get blown off the boards, can get damaged. I'm gonna stock all those. All brand new, not not removed from boards, you know, not taken off donors. They're all brand new, direct from manufacturer. All in real tape and things like that. EMI filters for the uh, encoder ICs. Yep, stop those. Again, all brand new parts. Not lifted from donors. Supplied in real tape packaging. Just droppers, your requirements and quantities and location. And we get a nice price to you. Also, obviously, you know, if you need a board repair, <coughs> again, board repair services will go on the uh, go on the website as well. But again, in the meantime, if you're UK or EU based and you need a console repair and you want to ship your console to us, again, just drop us a a message with what's wrong with your machine and again your location we can get a quote to you if you're happy excellent let's get your machine fixed if not then that's completely up to you as well so all we're doing is we put some flux on these pins and the leaded solder that we applied to the pads before we installed the port basically all that happens is now is we're just touching a hot soldering iron tip to the legs and the flux will encourage the solder that we put on the pads to flow up onto the legs and give us a nice clean solid strong joint and connection the flux just helps to aid the flow of the solder make sure everything's nice and as it should be there we go I'm happy with that so what we're going to do I'm just going to pop a bit of IPA to the rear of the port I'm going to clean it off I think this week as well I'm going to order my brand new ultrasonic cleaner. The time has come. Make cleaning these boards off a hell of a lot easier. Post repair, because at the moment we do a quick sort of tidy up before testing and then do a thorough clean before final reassembly. But obviously it's all done by hand at the moment, it'd be nice to get it in the ultrasonic which will get everything absolutely spotless you'd never know we touched it That's ultimately the aim also I make boards where they've had boards you know liquid spills and things like that a lot easier and a lot nicer to work on something I probably should have bought quite a while ago but funds didn't allow Business is ticking along nicely at the moment, so the time has come to invest in a little bit of kit. Like I say, the web shop opening up and things like that for you guys, because I know some of this stuff is really, really difficult to find if you don't know what you're after, what you're looking for, you know, where to get it from. And even if you do know what you're looking for and where to get it from, you know, certain components can be quite tricky to, to, to source because you know you've got to buy them in massive quantities which ultimately works out quite expensive I'm quite happy to you know if you want one I'll sell you one if you want ten I'll sell you ten so like these little diodes here got these in stock these little resistors got these in stock HDMI ports as I say EMI filters encoder ICs enameled wire yep got it all all you need to do Drop me a message and we'll hook you up. Like I said, when the web shop's online, open 24 7, baby. So, there we go. So, we've just folded the uh, the legs there to the rear of the port in. There we go. So, that'll make sure that the uh, the inner comb and everything and the outer, sh the outer, the outer, met met outer metallic shell are nicely and firmly together. 
So that's ready to go. So what we need to do now is turn it over and just do the ground feet. So remember at the start when we ran the leaded saddle over these to loosen them off? Well now we're going to do the opposite. We're going to run the leaded solder over them to make sure they're nice and solid. So there's the first two. As always, a little bit of flux. Some leaded solder. I'm going to change my tip soldering iron tip. So I usually do it this way around. I'll do the pins first before I do the f the, uh, the locating pins through the holes. Because what can happen is is that those 19 pins will hold these will hold the port in place while I do these big feet. What can happen is if you go straight for the feet is if you get the board hot enough the solder can actually float the, the the port back through the holes so you end up actually slightly pushing the uh, the port back out which can be uh, tricky can be a pain okay I'm just going to run some of that leaded solder back into the holes. There we go. Lovely. And the same with the other side. You can kind of see how it looks a little bit sort of crusty there. That's just the remnants of the old leaded stuff. I'm about to get rid of that. I'm just going to run this over the legs. It can be quite awkward to get this foot closest to the uh, encoder IC EMI shield. There you go. Lovely. So that's all four locating legs done. A little bit of IPA over the top. Just get them cleaned off. Like I say, it's a quick clean for now. We'll do a final thorough clean before the assembly. Just to make sure we leave nothing on the board that we don't want. And the remnants of the flux and everything else. Leave the board looking nice and clean, as clean as it was when it came to us. And that's it, ladies and gentlemen. So there we go. New port is in, new port is soldered, and this is ready for testing. So hopefully, put this back in the chassis, we'll have a nice working PlayStation again. Right, okay, ladies and gentlemen. So we've got our machine all reassembled, all plugged in. So let's give it a test. There we go. That's a good start. So this is going to check the hard disk drive. Whilst we've had the console apart as well, we've done a, a thorough check on the thermal paste and things like that. We've replaced that, of course. Um, we always use Arctic MX4. Completely genuine stuff, of course, as well. This is just doing a hard disk check. And once it's done that, we should get a reboot down into OS. Hopefully, 
we'll start to see something a little bit more like what we uh, expect to see when we turn our PlayStation on. There we go. PlayStation logo. So of course as well sometimes you'll you'll get this far and you'll see the check-in but then you won't see anything else and you'll lose sync and nothing else on your screen. That can also be down to a damaged HDMI encoder I see. Where certain resolutions work and certain ones don't. And as you can see there of course this looks like this PlayStation was cruelly cut short and it looks like um, the power cord was plugged and was just pulled on it last time and as you can see there of course shutting down it's gone into rest mode turn it back on still going into rest mode by the looks of it god they take forever don't they Let's wake it back up. You see there, the top corner, HDMI, sync, and back into dashboard. That's a little bit more like what we'd expect to see from our PlayStation. So as you can see there now, that's looking really rather nice and we've got another one fixed so yeah as before ladies and gentlemen uh, keep an eye open on that web address there uh, for the web shop going live shortly there you'll be able to find most things that you're going to need to be able to do this kind of work like say if you're missing anything if there's something you can't find on there drop me an email if there's something you really require in the meantime before the shops open and online drop me an email uh, in the email addresses in the description with what you need quantities and I'll see if I can hook you up. Um, like I say, if you if you need a repair on your own machine and you're based in the UK or the EU, then please drop me an email for now. Uh, I can be got on the email address in the description. Uh, and from there, like I say, we can arrange you know a quote for you, including shipping. If you're happy, we we'll go ahead with it and we we'll get you fixed as well. So thank you very much for watching, ladies and gentlemen. Hopefully you found that useful or at least interesting. If you've got any comments or questions, feel free to pop them below. I'm on Twitter at YT Andrew Paul. DM box is open to everybody on there if you want to send me a message on there. Uh, likewise, you know I try to get through all the comments and things that people leave down below. Uh, you can send me a private message on here. I do look at those as well. Uh, like I say, business email, uh, if you have any sort of like questions with regards to uh, repair services or any products that we sell, then feel free to drop me an email below. Uh, like I say, in the meantime, if there's anything you need, drop me an email and I'll get it to you. Like I say, the web shop, hopefully in a couple of weeks' time, is going to be live. And uh, like I say, if you need shipping and there's something, you know, you don't see shipping to your country, just drop us an email and we'll gladly get your quotes all today. So thanks for watching. As I say, thank you. You've been amazing. I've been Andy Paul. And I will see you on the next video in the not too distant future. So for me, for now, it's bye bye. Many thanks for watching then ladies and gentlemen, hopefully you've enjoyed this video, if you have then why not check out these recommendations below. Also, please remember to comment, rate and of course subscribe to the channel if you found this useful, we've plenty more content on there and there's lots more to come.